All right, going to go ahead and get started here. So thanks, everybody, for joining today. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. Um, today's webinar is going to be on the Data Studio for Data Visualization. So we're going to be talking about Google Data Studio, which is um, Google's kind of visualization um, dashboarding tool that they've released in the last uh, probably about a year and a half now, I think um, it's been. So we'll essentially be talking through a few things. I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself before we do anything else. Um, just pass through it. So my name is Andy Gibson. Um, I work at InfoTrust. I am a uh, I'm the head of vertical for our news and media division. So mainly I work with a lot of larger publishers um, across the world. Um, a little bit about InfoTrust. So we are web analytics consulting and product development company. Um, we work with a ton of sites annually just through our clients. Um, we also do a lot of digital marketing, digital analytics training programs. Um, we also have offices uh, in Cincinnati and then also Dubai. Um, we're also Google Analytics certi certified partners. We are Google Analytics uh, premium sales partners, and we are Data Studio certified and optimized certified as well. So what we're going to be talking about here today, um, we're going to be talking about Data Studio's interface, uh, data connectors like um, you know your Google Analytics, AdWords, YouTube Analytics, um, DoubleClick. We'll be talking about all of that stuff. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about community widgets, which have actually, uh, or excuse me, community connectors, which have actually been released in the last uh, probably about two months now. And so you can actually use some third-party connectors um, to pull in additional data points as well. Um, widget types, we'll talk through that and what you can do with those. Um, we'll create a just very standard um, dashboard using some of these widgets um, and most likely just Google Analytics data. And then we'll also go through some use cases for um, kind of enterprise clients. Um, so really that's it um, in terms of slides. The rest is going to be just hands-on in um, Data Studio. So first, when you sign into Data Studio and everybody has access to Data Studio, all you have to do is go to datastudio.google.com. Right now, it's a free product. There are no enterprise features. Um, they are Google is going to be coming out with um, some enterprise features in a kind of paid model um, at some point next year, um, but they haven't released any information on that yet. So as of right now, everything's free. Um, when you first log into Data Studio, you're going to see a whole list of reports that you have access to, and a lot of those are going to be sample reports that Google Analytics has put in there, um, or that Google has put in there for you. And so some of that information is going to be like, Sample reports using Google Analytics for Firebase data, uh, Google Analytics just for your kind of a marketing website, e-commerce data. Um, and so we'll go through some of those examples, and I'll kind of show you the ins and outs of that. Um, but first, really just wanted to cover what you're going to look at when you get into Data Studio. So you can see up here at the top, you have this start a new report section. Um, and so you can start a new report from just a blank, um, essentially a blank template, or you can choose one of the templates that they have set up. So these are all example reports as I've set up previously, which essentially you can use the same kind of configuration uh, theme and then plug in your data source and then everything updates automatically for you. So if you want, you know, these look very nice. If you want to use some of these um, to get started, you can. And then if you want to, you can change the color schemes or anything like that. But these are pretty good templates just to get started. Um, for our purposes, just wanted to walk you through a blank um, report here. So essentially what just happened is we've created an untitled report. So this is a blank screen. We are um, in essentially ready to uh, attach our data source. Now with Data Studio, you have to have some type of data source attached or else obviously there's no way for you to create reports or create widgets or anything like that. So you can see in the bottom right hand corner over here, this is where we're going to select our data sources. Um, for us, uh, we can take a look at here, and these are the different types of connectors that are by default set up in Data Studio. So one is obviously you can upload a file like a CSV. Um, you have connectors for a lot of Google products, obviously, since this is a Google product. Um, after all, you have AdWords, Attribution 360, BigQuery, um, DCM is DoubleClick Campaign Manager, DFP is DoubleClick for Publishers, both Google products, Google Cloud Storage. Google Analytics, Google Sheets. So if you have any data that's being pulled into Google Sheets, you can connect that as well. Um, and there's also Google Search Console and then YouTube Analytics. So those are all the standard um, Google products that you can connect. And then also there's additional ones like um, Cloud SQL databases um, you can connect to. You can connect to MySQL databases, uh, PostgreSQL databases, um, and then any additional kind of 
information that you want to input into here, you can either load that into Google Sheets and then connect that, or you can pull it out into a CSV and then upload that file. Um, for our example here, we're strictly just going to use Google Analytics. Um, and so for us, um, just going to use our regular accounts. Um, set up and so essentially all you're doing is selecting the account property and view and again you have to have access within Google Analytics to these um, accounts and properties before you're able to connect them so uh, just be mindful of that and so once you connect the data source essentially it's going to give you a readout on all the different fields that can be imported now in this case all these are standard um, fields that can be uh, exported through Google's uh, Google Analytics API so there's really nothing we're going to have to change here now, if you're connecting to something like a SQL database, you might have, um, you know, 100 fields that you don't really care about. You only care about five of them. You could actually remove all of those fields if you wanted to. So you have the option to disable one of those fields um, if you would like. In this case, I'm not too concerned about disabling anything. I just want everything to show up. And so essentially, we're just going to choose Add to Report. So once you've added it to the report, now you're in this kind of uh, edit view. So that's when you see these grids right here. Um, with these grid marks, essentially those grid marks can be used to um, essentially move things around and make sure that you're um, organizing everything as best as possible. So uh, in this case, I'm going to curate a couple widgets here just to kind of show you what this looks like. So it's really... Um, kind of a drag and drop um, type functionality here. So for instance, if I click in... Um, to this time series chart, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this across the table here, and now it's automatically going to create a time series plot for us. By default, it's going to use sessions. Um, over here is where you kind of control what you're doing. So if, let's say, I look at this and say, okay, time series, not really one of what I wanted to use. Let's do a scatter chart. It's going to go ahead and automatically change that for you, and then it's also going to change the dimensions down here. So there's standard dimensions for each one of these um, center dimensions and metrics for each one of these different widgets, uh, but you have the opportunity, you have the ability to change these. So for instance, uh, we'll go back to the time series chart, make this a little bigger for you, and then uh, let's say sessions is good, but I also want to see page views. Um, so I can go through this if I wanted to, but I'm just going to go into the search bar, it makes it a little bit easier, find page views, and add that. And essentially it's going to go back out to that API, pull that data, and then add it here. Um, so really that, that's kind of the crux of what this um, tool allows you to do. So it's very fast, very quick. You're able to um, really customize the look of this. And so if I go back here, uh, I'm going to flip over to the style tab. This allows me to stylize and change the kind of style effects for um, the specific widget. So for instance, if I want to, I can change the color of these. I can change the, um, uh, the thickness of the lines. Uh, the weight. So there's a lot of different options here. I'm not going to go through and kind of do all that for you. I'm not great with style, um, but the, there are a ton of options here for, for doing any of that. So for instance, we just want to keep, um, you know, we'll keep this down here. If I want to, you can do text boxes. So maybe I'll put a header on it. Um, and we'll go ahead and just call this example webinar dashboard. Now, just like anything in um, Google Sheets, you can go ahead and change all this around. So I'll just make the text a lot bigger. Pull this out so it's on one line. And then you can center it as much as you like. So we have that. Um, there are a lot of different widgets up here. So you have the opportunity to use bar charts, uh, combo charts, which is a combination of kind of time series bar chart, um, pie charts, tables, of course. Um, you have the geo map, which behaves just like it would in Google Analytics. Um, you have the scorecards, which are very interesting. I'll show that to you here in a second. Um, scatter charts, bullet charts, and then area charts. We just use the text box there, behaves just like any other text box. Um, you, you can insert images, you can insert a rectangle or a circle into the page. Um, also, you can put a date range on here, you can put in some filter controls, and then a data control. And I'll cover these here in a second. Now, with the scorecards, essentially what a scorecard is, is just high-level metric, and it's just going to show you a number. Um, so, for instance, if I wanted to just get a quick snapshot of my website and go ahead and say, okay, I want to know how many sessions there are, 
Um, I want to know how many users there are, and I want to know how many page views, something like that. So we'll put sessions in the middle. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So it's going to create another one with sessions, and then I'm just going to change sessions to users. And I'm going to do the same thing over here, copy and paste. It's going to show us sessions again. I'm going to change that to, let's see, page views. And now we kind of have a, a printout, a overview metric um, for each one of these. And so I can make this style, I can change the size of these. Um, you can make compact numbers if you want to just show something like 13.1K instead of 13,000. A um, whole lot of stuff here to do. Um, if I was doing this, I'd probably make these a little bit bigger at the top and so on. So um, really easy to change the style of these, um, really easy to kind of get what you're looking for. Um, Generally, when we make some dashboards um, for clients, we typically will do these overview metrics at the top to just allow them to uh, better understand what they're looking at. Now, with the date picker, this will allow anybody that accesses the actual dashboard to choose whatever date range they want. So in this instance, I'm going to um, just move this over a little bit to make room for our date range, make this a little bit bigger. And so by default, when you share this link with somebody, all this data is going to have a specific default date range if you want it to. So for instance, I can make this, let's say for the last 14 days. And so anytime someone opens up this dashboard, it's going to show the last 14 days automatically. Now, uh, if I am, and I just switched over to the view mode, which is what anybody is actually gonna see. Now, if I'm getting this, it defaults to those last 14 days, but then I can also change it to whatever I want. So for instance, okay, last 14 days, that's good, but I wanna see the last 30 days rolling. And now it's gonna go back and change every single one of these widgets on here for the data for those last 30 days. So really interesting concepts there. Um, again, all this data is just available through the Google Analytics API. And so what it's doing every single time you change the date range, add different metrics, um, add different dimensions, it's going back out to that um, Google Analytics API and then pulling the data back out into this report. Um, It'll show you also down at the bottom here as you're going through the date it was uh, the data was last updated. So in case you're curious about that, that's where as well. Uh, and so I'll go through here and show you a couple other things as well. So we have, let's say, um, our time series chart here. Um, I'm interested in seeing something like the top 10 pages on the site as well. So I'll pull that down here and we'll just make a little table. And so you can see here right now by default, it's looking at source and then the number of sessions. Um, I'm not interested in source. I wanna know the specific page. So we'll look at the page URL here and then um, let's take a look at instead of sessions, it's gonna be page views. Oops. The sessions we have page views here. And so now I just put together, let's see, this is going to be the top 10. I can change this to be, let's do top five. It's a little bit smaller. And so now we can arrange this a little bit, make this a little bit smaller. Um, and so there you go. We have the top 10 pages. Um, for whatever date range we have selected up here. Now again, all this is customizable in terms of the appearance. So if I wanted to, I could go over to the style section and then change you know, the table colors, the size of the text within the labels, all that information is um, able to, to be updated. Um, again, this is not really gonna focus on kind of the design aspect of this. That's really not my, my uh, area of expertise, but wanted to show you what is definitely possible in here. So again, a lot of this is just kind of configuring this as you want it to look. And so in terms of creating a quick dashboard, it's very, very simple. Now, if you want that dashboard to be really pretty and all the color schemes to make sense and stuff like that, you have to put a little bit more work into it. Um, one of the other things I wanted to show you, so we also have filter control and then also data control. Now, with the filter control, we can actually filter all the data on this specific um, dashboard by whatever we want to, uh, whatever is available in GA, essentially. So in this instance, if I wanted to create a filter, we'll say, um, let's create a filter for country. And so this would be the actual country that people are coming from to visit our site. Um, I can put a filter in there for that. And so what that looks like uh, once you do that, we have a list of all the different countries that are bringing traffic to our website. 
Now, right now, we're mainly a U.S. company. Um, we're based in the U.S., but we also have international companies as well. So what might be interesting is seeing traffic outside of the United States. And so I could come down here, um, unclick the United States. Now, all the data, not just one widget, all the widgets on this page actually update for everything else. And so essentially what we've done is excluded United States traffic from uh, these reports on this page. So, for instance, if I wanted to see only United States traffic, I can hover over United States, click only, and now this is showing us only traffic coming from the United States. So, really cool stuff there, um, especially if you're wanting to, you know, look at a specific segment or um, anything like that. It, it's very easy to build filter controls into your specific report. Um, and again, you can stylize any of this um, as you kind of go through this. So obviously this doesn't look all that great. Um, you can change the text size, the color, all that stuff um, as well. One of the other things uh, I wanted to cover is data control. And so let's um, switch out of here. I'm going to move this around a little bit. And we're going to make this a little bit smaller, so I have room here. And then I'm going to build in this data control. And so the data control is actually a really uh, cool update that's come out in the last, um, I don't even know what it's been, a uh, few months at least. Um, the data control allows you to essentially select the default property and view that you want to use. Um, or also change that as well. So for instance, right now, that one data source that we controlled, um, the one data source that we selected, it's coming from InfoTrust's Google Analytics property. Now, in this case, I could actually share this out across multiple clients, and they could actually select their own properties every single time they want to look. Or for instance, if we send this out to, let's say, a multi-brand company, they'd actually be able to select different brands, and it's going to be the same report. It's just going to update all of the data in here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So over here, you can see this is going to give you the opportunity to select your property, uh, your account property and view that you want to view the data. So in, uh, currently right now, our default view is going to be the one that we attached initially. So that's our InfoTrust property. Now, let's say I want to take a look at our Analytics at Excite website, which is um, one of our... Uh, one of our conference websites, we can find here, let's see, main view. So we have InfoTrust, corporate account, analytics at Excite, and then our main view. So now essentially what I've done is I've changed whatever property and view that we're connecting to. And so again, you can see how powerful this is. If you share one report with uh, a company and they have, let's say, 10 different websites, instead of having to create 10 different versions of that report or dashboard, you can actually just create one and then give them the option to go up here and actually select what data they want to look at. So whichever website they want to look at. And so again, you can use all these together. And so I can change the date range. I can change whatever the data source is. And then I could filter out by specific countries or anything like that. Um, obviously really not killing it in terms of users or sessions because we haven't had a conference in the last few years, um, but you get the drift. And so really one of the powerful things about Data Studio is that it's very, very customizable, but also it's customizable across whatever sources you're connecting to. And so because we built this um, filter control up here and we have the connector type as Google Analytics, anybody with access to Google Analytics properties can open this up with whatever that account is, and then they can come in here and select any of the accounts that they have access to with GA. And then this will update automatically based on that GA data. So that's really, really cool. That was actually released in the last few months, and that was one of the biggest um, pieces of feedback that we had and also some of our clients had, is that it's great, but what happens if we have 10 websites? We don't necessarily want to have um, a uh, report for each website when we're really reporting on the same thing. Let's just you know do this all in one. And so once this came out, opportunity to create one report and then allow them to self-select whichever websites or properties they want to connect to. So really powerful benefit there. Um, and that's been released in the last few months. And so that, that's really, really awesome. Again, all this is uh, customizable too. So even your default data uh, control up here, you can change the size of that, do whatever. Um, really, that's what I wanted to show you with Google uh, Data Studio is the easy you can get started. So right now, obviously not the prettiest thing. We can send this out to somebody and say, hey, look, you know, here's our 
traffic over the last um, 30 days, feel free to change the date range, go through that. Um, here's what we're trending with sessions and page views. Here are the top five pages. Um, again, not the, not the best report you'd ever want to share out with anybody, but you get the, uh, you get the drift there. Um, now, I'll show you a couple examples of reports um, that Google has put together. I think these are really based on um, templates. So these are all templates that you're able to actually use. And so when we went into the interface um, and you saw up here where it says starting a report, these are all templates up here. So if you click on this all templates, you can select these um, to create. Now with this uh, Google Analytics marketing website template, they've built in that data control for you. So again, you can go through the same thing. And just like I did, I'll go ahead and show you can connect to the InfoTrust main property with goals. And so now this report that Google's put together and built, this report now houses the data essentially that um, is in our uh, internal uh, Google Analytics property. So really cool stuff there. Again, the same idea up here with the um, date range, self-select that, but it defaults to um, looks like the last 30 days. Uh, they have their um, overview midget, widgets up here at the top. So users, sessions, page views, and bounce rate. There's actually an option with those widgets to actually include um, these kind of spark lines here. And so that'll show you how it's trending over this last period that you have selected. Uh, we're looking at site sessions trending with a time series chart. So you can see sessions and sessions with the previous 30 days, um, which channels are driving engagement. So I have a little bar chart here. Um, organic search you can see is driving a lot of the sessions and page views. Uh, engagement by age and gender. So they're actually using some of the demographic data that's in Google Analytics to uh, present on that. Um, and then also they have uh, pretty much the same report, but in two different formats here. So um, the top countries by sessions as a geo map. And so you can just scroll over this and it'll show you, break it down by um, specific country. And then I also have it broken down in a table format um, that'll allow you to see where they're trending with sessions and page views. So it's the United States at the top. And so this is showing you a lot of our traffic in terms of sessions and page views comes from the US. But we do get a lot of traffic from India, uh, UK, France, Canada, Germany, that sort of thing. So this is one standard report that you can actually build right now. If you go into datastudio.google.com, they'll have this in there for you. And then because they have that data filter control, all you need to do is connect to um, a, that Google Analytics property, and then it'll allow you to select um, all of those. Um, another example here is of their Google Merchandise Store. So Google uh, obviously has Google Analytics tracking on their Google Merchandise Store. And so basically this is built with um, all that data. And so they have uh, the date range up here built in. They have an image up here for Google Merchandise Store. And then they built in filters as well. And so they have multiple filters that you can use. So they have a filter for device category, for country, for source medium, and for user type. Um, they have their high level metrics over here. So sessions, product detail views, product add to carts, uh, and then product checkouts. And then they have some time series charts right here. So this is the top left would be for sessions, for revenue, for products add to cart, and then for cart to detail ratio. Now down here, they're breaking out some of this data into specific tables. And so they have um, a product table down here for the top selling products. Um, and top products right now in terms of product detail views, product add to carts, and whatever. You can sort these. All you have to do is click on whatever column you're trying to sort, and then it's going to go ahead and sort that for you. So I clicked on the product revenue per purchase, and now it's sorted based on um, the highest number there. Same idea down here with the source and medium. So this is showing you the top sources and mediums, the top traffic sources um, in terms of metrics like product detail views, product add to carts, revenue, e-commerce conversion rate. Um, so for instance, if I'm wondering, you know, what is driving the highest e-commerce conversion rate uh, for this date range? Well, we can see it's coming from, I don't even know what this is, secureacceptance.cybersource.com referral. So they probably have some referral links on that. Um, again, you have to take this with a little grain of salt because you can see here that product detail views is very low for a lot of these. Um, but again, you can choose to segment by something else. So we'll do revenue. And now you can see that Google Organics actually driving most of the revenue. Um, they have a couple of other widgets over here. Um, so this one is breaking out their traffic by device type. So they have desktop, mobile, and tablet, and then revenue by city. So they have a, a, pie, chart, a pie chart with um, the different cities. I tend to stay away from pie charts, especially with uh, dimensions that have um, this many rows because there are obviously a lot of different cities where people are purchasing products. You can see over 
uh, half over 50% um, of their pie chart is just made up with others. So not really the best way to present that, but it just gives you an idea of what's possible. Now, for instance, if I wanted to, I could look at, let's say, only mobile traffic. And so all of these reports, again, on this specific page are then going to filter based on just that specific device category. So Google goes back out to the Google Analytics API, pulls all that information in, and then updates all of these reports. And I can see over here, again, because this was breaked out by, broken out by device category, because we selected mobile only, that's the only one that's going to show up. Um, and then also, if I wanted to, I could further drill into a specific uh, dimension. So for country, we're only going to look at United States traffic. And again, this is going to go out and uh, pull that data back out. And so it's right now we have only looking at mobile device traffic coming from the United States. And then we could further get more granular with a specific source and medium. So maybe I choose uh, Google CPC or Google Organic. And again, it's constantly updating this, this data in this report based on those filters that are put in here. And so now all the data is updated as well. So really interesting um, how you can build out different filters in here, how you can use um, what we've talked about on the previous report with the filter control um, or the data control, excuse me, to be able to connect really any type of data source to your report. Um, and then you also have the date range option up there at the very top as well. Another example is AdWords. And so AdWords is another connector you can have out of the box. Um, and so with AdWords, um, very similar idea. You're essentially presenting on your data. And so they have a couple cards up here for their overall metrics. So you can see they put a title for a text box title up here. And then it's breaking down the CTR and impressions. So we have clicks, CTR and impressions. And then conversion rate and cost. We have the number of conversions, conversion rate, and then cost per conversion. And then cost per click. So they have cost, average CPC, and then average CPM. So down here we have, essentially we're breaking out time series charts um, with clicks and CTR, conversions and conversion rate, and then cost and average CPC, average cost per conversion. And then down here, they have a table built in, which is showing you the top campaign. So all these are AdWords campaigns. It's showing you, um, right now it's filtered by the top, uh, or it's not filtered, it's order, organized by the top click-through rate. If I wanted to, you can click on one of these. And so, um, oh, system error. Don't know what happened there. Um, and then for device breakdown, again, a very similar thing to what we we're looking at, but it's actually showing you a pie chart um, for each one of uh, these metrics. So we're looking at clicks, cost, and then conversions, and then it's breaking it down by computer, tablet, and then mobile phone. Um, not the prettiest down here, not really a big fan of these. Again, I tend to never use pie charts. I don't think they're really, um, there's really not a whole lot of use cases where I would recommend using pie charts, but um, that is an option here. So that's Google AdWords. Um, one of the other benefits that um, Google Data Studio has is that let's say you are a e-commerce organization and you're using Google AdWords, you're using Google Analytics, you're using um, YouTube Analytics, you're using DoubleClick for um, uh, advertising, banner advertising, all those disparate data sources because they're Google products and because there's connectors built in, you actually create one specific report with all of that data. Now, for instance, I can give you an example. Um, if we go back to this Google Analytics uh, marketing website, uh, because, actually, that's probably not a good example. Uh, let's just use AdWords. So essentially, what we have set up right now is this is all pulling, every single one of these widgets is pulling out of the AdWords account. What I could actually do is then change these and connect different connectors, and I could essentially change these um, uh, widgets down here to pull out data out of another data source. So for instance, I could put high level Google Analytics metrics right here with something like uh, users, sessions, and page views. I could keep the AdWords metrics here, so conversions, conversion rate, and cost per conversion. And then over here for double click, I could attach um, impressions, click through rate, and then cost per click or something like that for their actual um, banner ads. And so within that same report, I can actually use multiple data sources. So that's also beneficial um, because you don't have to create a specific report for each one of those data sources. You can actually create them all, um, or you actually use them all within one specific um, report, which is nice. One of the other things I hadn't talked about yet is when you're creating these uh, reports, you can also create multi-page reports. And so uh, you can actually create um, different pages for that section. 
So for instance, we have maybe one overview page, and that's going to include what we just talked about, it includes our high-level metrics from AdWords, from um, Google Analytics, and from DoubleClick. And then I could also create a more detailed report for each one of those as its own page. So for instance, we might have page two be the overview, like high-level Google Analytics stuff that dives in a little bit deeper. Page three would be for AdWords, and page four would be for DoubleClick. So now as you build this out, you can go through here and actually choose what you want. And you can rename these. So um, for instance, I could rename this to uh, all data overview. Could rename this one to Google Analytics. Add a new page. Rename that one to Google AdWords, and you get the drift. So now as you're going through here, okay, I just want to look at all the data together. You have all of your data together with the high-level metrics for AdWords, for DoubleClick, for Google Analytics. And now I can hop into Google Analytics, the tab that for that specific page. Now this lays out a lot more widgets for me. So it's diving in deeper into things like the top five pages, top 10 pages, uh, top traffic sources, top campaigns, uh, all that information you can actually build out. So Again, just to summarize with that, um, you can use multiple data sources in the same page. And so that's really beneficial if you're trying to create some type of like overview um, dashboard that's pulling in uh, a couple of different data sources. And then if you want to be able to kind of dive in deeper to those data sources, you can create pages for each one of those and dive in. Um, let's see, we got a question here. Let's go ahead and take that. So Stephen had a question, how do non-technical stakeholders get access to Data Studio? Can this info be exported into a PDF, et cetera? Um, great question. So in terms of non-technical stakeholders, um, Data Studio is available to anybody. So you don't have to be technical. You don't have to be um, you know, anything to get access. All you have to do is go to datastudio.google.com. Now, outside of that, if you're trying to connect data sources, which obviously makes sense to use um, Data Studio 4, you'd have to get access throughout um, through your organization. So if you are um, trying to get access to Google Analytics, you need to talk to the team that actually runs Google Analytics and does user admin for that. In terms of exports, um, it can be exported. Um, so right now, um, there's a few different things that you can do. One is you can actually embed the reports into whatever kind of website that you have. So if you have some internal um, reporting tool that you're using that uses, uh, you know, web language. If you have, um, you know, internet or something like that, you can actually embed that. Um, outside of that, you can actually um, export specific um, uh, specific widgets. So go to view here real quick. So you can actually export specific widgets to CSV, CSV for Excel, or export to Sheets. Uh, for the PDF, that's not yet an option, um, though that is on their um, list of things to do. They haven't given a specific date range yet for when they're going to have that available, but PDF is coming. So that's something that um, the Data Studio teams heard a lot from, uh, and so that, that's definitely prioritized. They just don't have a, a time frame for that yet. So hopefully those, uh, those answers answer your question there, Stephen. Let me know if not. Um, let's see, did I cover everything? So one of the other things I wanted to talk about real quick is the um, additional connectors that you can use. So we had talked about the Google connectors for things like AdWords, Google Analytics, um, BigQuery, YouTube Analytics, Google Search Console, all that stuff. Um, but there's also additional data sources that you can use. And so if you have SQL databases, like a Cloud SQL database, um, a MySQL database, uh, a post-GRE SQL database, you can actually connect those. And so if you have kind of like internal tools that you want to do some reporting on, you can connect those with your, uh, your essentially uh, login authorization information, and then you can pull that data into Google Data Studio. Um, but outside of that, there's also what's called community connectors. And these have been released in the last, I think it's been two months. With these, you can actually pull additional data sources. And so people, this is kind of a community of connectors, just what it sounds like. People that are building these connectors to connect to a bunch of different other tools. And so, for instance, if you want to pull in Adobe Analytics data, you can use this specific connector from Supermetrics. Um, there are connectors for Bing ads, for Twitter, for Facebook, um, Facebook ads, Facebook public data, 
uh, Instagram, MailChimp, MailChimp Analytics, Pinterest, Reddit, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, Vimeo, Twitter Public Data, uh, Yandex, all these different types of connectors you can essentially add and then use that um, as well. Uh, let's see, we had another question. How about Facebook and Twitter insights and their ad dashboards? Can those be connected to if yes, how? So their dashboards can't be connected, but you can connect to those data points. So with these community connectors, um, you have the option. There's a few companies that have built them. Supermetrics is one. Power My Analytics is another. They have Facebook ads. Uh, both of them actually have Facebook ads and Facebook insights connectors. Um, the process is pretty simple. So you go to add a connector. You authorize it, and then it'll actually ask you to authorize uh, that it knows who you are with Google. And then you have to go through the process of authorizing it with Facebook. So Facebook Insights requires authorization. I don't have access to any Facebook Insights, but if you do, you authorize that with your account, and then it'll allow you to pull in that data. And so essentially what it'll do is it'll pull up the um, kind of like a tray of all of the data points that are available through the API, and then it'll allow you to connect that information into GA, similarly to what we did with um, Google Analytics. Now, I can't guarantee that these um, work 100% of the time. They're supposed to, but again, these are all coming from additional companies, and these are a community. They're supposed to be updating these, um, these connectors, so use them kind of at your own uh, discretion. But uh, for the most part, I haven't really seen too many issues with them. And if you do have an issue, you can report it as well. And um, if Google finds that it is an issue, they'll actually remove them from the list of community connectors. Um, I'm also not sure if those, uh, if these community connectors for things like Facebook Insights are pulling all the data um, that you have available in Facebook Insights reports. Um, it's possible that there are only certain dimensions and metrics that are able to be pulled out of an API. Whereas with the reports in Facebook, you might have access to more data. Um, that'd be a question that you want to look up uh, with Facebook's Insights API documentation um, to get that information. So um, really those community connectors uh, expand the additional data sources that you can connect to. And so a lot of people are starting to build them out for social networks, which we just saw, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, and then also building them out for additional kind of analytics tools. So you saw one in there for um, Adobe uh, Analytics, Adobe Omniture. So uh, to pull data out of those, um, if you have any other databases that you want to connect to, again, right now, the uh, only ones, there's three types that you can connect to, SQL databases. Uh, but Google is in the process of constantly updating these lists to add additional connectors that they support. At the same time, people are then building uh, community connectors as well. So um, if you want to build a community connector, there's information on how to do that. Um, it's all using uh, Google Apps app scripts, and it seems to be pretty easy, um, but you'd uh, have to walk through that documentation. Um, any other questions about what we've covered so, so far today? So that was really the extent of what I want to cover. I wanted to talk through the interface, um, what those connectors look like, I uh, wanted to talk about all the different types of widgets and kind of the, the functionality of building a report, especially wanted to cover the data source um, information, the filters, and the date range stuff, and then also go through a little bit more in detail those community connectors. Let me know if you have any other questions. Um, that's the end of what I have set up for today. Um, we are recording this, and uh, we'll be able to send this out. I think our marketing team will do that in the next few days. So you'll get a copy of the recording, so you can go back through that. If you have any questions, let me pull up this slide. Um, there's my email address. It's a gibson at infotrustllc.com. Would happy to uh, would be happy to talk to any of you guys about Data Studio, about any of the functionalities or features in there. Um, so let me know uh, outside of this webinar if you have any questions. Feel free to just email me. So I'll stick around for a couple more minutes, see if any other questions come through. Um, but if not, thanks so much for joining today, and we'll be in touch with a copy of the recording.